Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Infamous here, doing a little video talking about ESO and what I like to call <clears throat> the tale of too many carries. Basically, what I'm talking about is I guess if you play multiple classes in the Elder Scrolls Online, you'll realize that certain classes, I guess certain builds, whether it's like stamina, magicka, for the different for the different variations of the different classes, play very differently. Some are definitely more viable than others. Certain sets synergize better with certain builds than others, and that's okay because if you create as a developer, if you create certain sets, you can make those sets. Uh, scale better with like certain classes for example um, burning spell weave burning spell weave synergizes really well with magic and dk it's a really good set that you can utilize on the back bar um, because you can proc it with things like engulfing or if you're running like uh, burning talons etc so it's like sets like that you can create that are more dedicated for a specific class um, but there are certain sets of course i know all the rage on the forums now is about the nerf to pirate skeleton and the literal uptime of major protection that you get from running pirate skeleton as it procs for 12 out of 15 seconds literally giving you a three second cooldown of course during that time it's really easy uh, i see a lot of builds that utilize it especially I see it all the time in Battlegrounds, like multiple people. I mean, I say it all the time on stream. Oh, here goes another Pirate Skeleton user. Here goes another Pirate Skeleton user. It's literally at the point where like half of the people that I fight against in Battlegrounds run this set. And of course, all it does is make it make it extremely difficult to kill people because they're literally taking 30% less damage, even despite the fact that, yes, you do gain the minor health, minor, um, defile which is kind of irrelevant to the type of mitigation that you're receiving from the actual um, two-piece set the other thing of course is abilities for example like Restawalt. Restawalt on a halfway decent build um, especially we're talking you know in ESO no CP battlegrounds literally has around a 45 to 55,000 tooltip for the duration. It lasts five seconds, it heals per second, and of course not even talking about whether you choose um, the major force nerf with the, with the extra critical damage, or if you choose the other morph that actually gives you um, either mutagen or whichever morph that you pick, along with blessing of protection or whichever, um, whichever one that you pick, along with the healing ward attached to it. Just talking about the straight heal <coughs> excuse me that you get from this ability it's really difficult to understand how people can say that this ability of course is not is not overperforming and i could understand it people enjoy being carried um, especially because the game doesn't teach you how to play it makes it very difficult um, to be competitive in pvp and of course people always want to have an edge but in terms of keeping balance in the game, you're never going to achieve balance when you have too many carries in the game. For example, Restawalt. For example, Pirate Skeleton. For example, Shield Stacking. For example, um, Earth Core. For example, Cloak. Cloak is a carry. It's a huge carry. Even things like people complained about OP wings, yet no one complains about Warden Shimmering. Why? Because most people don't know how to play Warden and don't know how strong Warden is, especially because they just typically follow streamers. And if the streamer says, you know, they don't, if they don't play the class, then they're going to say, I don't think that they're in a good spot because maybe they don't see many of them. But if you play all the classes, um, it's really easy to see which classes are underperforming. And of course, from a development standpoint, it's really difficult to say, okay, going back to the development table, to say, okay, where is Sork overperforming? Like, what ability is Streak overperforming? Is it Boundless? Is it Curse? Is it Frags? Especially when you have so many carry abilities, for example, like Restawalt, like Pirate Skeleton. You know, it's hard to really say, okay, we need to tweak 
this particular skill, but is it the skill that's overperforming, or is it this particular build that is using pirate skeleton, shield stacking, and resto ultimate that's really the problem on top of the fact that it's a, you know, a pet build, right? You know, a pet build with pirate skeleton, with the, with double and triple shield stacking, with a black rose resto all on the back bar, with with resto heal on the back bar as well. It's like, how do you pick which is overperforming? Which do you tweak? I mean, you take a good look at Restowalt. And this is, of course, in no CP. And this is why I talk about just looking at Restowalt. It's got a 9,300 tooltip. And of this, of course, this is without Major Mending. And of course, it's really easy to get Major Mending on this ability. You can cast the ability and just toss in a heavy attack. And if you want to see how much it looks like, in no CP with major mending, and you can see right there it's an addition. That's an additional two thousand. <coughs> so in essence, this heal. Just looking at a calculator, we'll pull out a calculator. Again, this is for no CP. This is by no means like a glass cannon build, um, right? So it's eleven thousand six seventy per tick, and that's times five ticks, and that's fifty eight thousand. 350 healing that's over the course of five seconds it, on a sork it costs 107 ultimate so 107 ultimate just divide that by base alt by base um ultimate region you're looking at a 36 second tick you throw in something like blood spawn you throw in anything that offers any sort of extra ult gen you just secure a kill right you take you secure a kill you shave what is it 20 points off of this after a kill so instead of 107 it becomes 87 you divide that by three it's 29 seconds every 29 seconds you can have this ultimate but of course you have to keep in mind that you also have to consider the fact that while the ult is running you're gaining ticks of ultimate so by the time this ability actually wears off you actually gain an additional 15 ultimate so the 87 ult minus 15 because 72 so actually from the time if you were for as an example to secure a kill pop resto alt and then you next would be able to use resto alt within the next 24 seconds you throw in something like pirate skeleton and of course shield stacking in its current state and you can easily see how magic of sork just literally just becomes over the top you throw in one or two streaks, maybe you drop mines, you toss up two shields, you're literally sitting on like low HP, you've got like 12, 13k in shields, and then you just throw up a Ruster Walt, and then by the time you actually have another opening to kill the Sork, because maybe you bursted them with your ultimate, they used their defensive ultimate, and now you're literally right back where you started. Because by the time you get your ultimate, for example, for... If you're using something like Dawnbreaker, and if you're running Stamina Sork, you're literally in this perpetual rotation of 107 ultimate for damage. And if you take a look at the amount of damage that it does, as you can see, Dawnbreaker does, let's just say 10k, and then it does another 11k over the next 6 seconds. Resto Alt heals you for 2.5 times the amount of damage that Dawnbreaker does. And people are like, thank God they're giving Dawnbreaker a cast time. And I'm like, really? Really? Dawnbreaker, on this particular build, let's just let's, let's look at DB, for example, on, on another build where I run. Let's look at it on a pure stamina build. I'll pick my highest um, weapon damage build, and I'll go with my, my hybrid Sork, which is just shy of... Um, it's like 53, 5,500 or so. Actually, let's look at it on this build. Because I think this build has really high. 6k spell damage, 6k uh, weapon damage. And just to take a look at what DB looks like on this particular build. Again, this is a no CP. Alright, so it's 12.6k plus 14. So it's half. It's just about half of what Resto Alt does. And this is part of the problem is that defensive ultimates are entirely too cheap at least in the case of resto alt than offensive ultimates and offensive ultimates should always be 
should always do more should always be able to do more damage than defensive at the very least defensive should always be looked at as being more expensive overall than offense offensive should always be the cheaper variant of the two primarily because people have to die or otherwise you have this ridiculous um, time to kill window where people just don't die i mean i can show you a clip where we're literally fighting this uh this um templar that's using misform that's using um the healing ultimate as well as block canceling and it's like literally four people are just sitting there beating on him to no more avail like and we literally takes like a good five minutes before this guy goes down with four people beating on him and on the build that i'm running i'm running like 5300 um 5300 uh, weapon and spell spell damage on on a hybrid sork and i should literally be able to burst this guy down within one global cooldown but because of things like uh, misform block mitigation um templar heals templar heals are just ridiculously ridiculously strong perfect example of what what does a templar heal look like in no cp i'm happy to show you this is what templars basically spam any well-built templar will basically have heals in this nature right 11 point that's almost this is called 12k like literally spamming 12k heals so two templar heals right at the cost of 8k magicka do more healing than the db that i just showed you right right so you were literally dawn break a templar and it only takes him two breath two breath of lives to out heal all that damage and it costs you an ultimate to do that and this is why it's really difficult for ESO developers to have any sort of balance in their game because there are far too many carries in the game between things like Pirate Skeleton, Shield Stacking, um, even if you look at Earth Gore is another example, um, Honor the Dead, another example, looking at the fact that when someone has CC immunity, they can just sit there and gain 30% 30, 30 damage mitigation from Deep Thoughts. I see other streamers use this, and they know it's broken, but they abuse it anyway. Uh, because that the setups are easy. They run these ridiculously high spell damage in any other environment outside of being carried by the fact that they can't be bashed while using this. It is a carry. You know you're getting carried. By the mechanic because you run really 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 low recovery and really really high spell damage with really low max magica and the moment you get cc'd you just sit there with your arms up you know you can't be bashed you know you can't be countered in essence you are being carried by the ability you're being carried by the broken mechanic in the game and of course things like that it makes it very difficult um, for there to be any semblance of balance in the game so literally why you look back at the way the game was originally developed was that there were so many counters to everything things like dizzy swing you couldn't dizzy swing someone um, in their face and not get bashed you had to have other forms of damage you couldn't just spam dizzy swing back in the days because you could just get for example you could just get bashed things like heavy attack being able to heavy attack in someone's face of course you couldn't do that back in the day they would just bash you so you had to time when you were getting your resources back Either you, you you basically ranged CC the person and then you would go into a heavy attack because you needed the resources. Nowadays, you can just sit there and heavy attack someone for and, and there's no counter to it because you just can't you can't bash the person. Things like, for example, Soul Assault. Soul Assault used to be bashed used to be bashed. It does ridiculous amounts of damage. You look at any sort of a build, again, we're taking taking a look at Magic Assort build. What does a resto alt look like on this particular build? Let's go to world. Let's go to soul assault. And you can see it does 40,000 damage. I picked this morph because I like the explosion. But you could go with something like uh, shatter. And this is why it's getting this is why it's getting nerfed from only costing 85 ultimate. 85 is nothing. You literally have this shit up every 20 seconds. You secure a kill or two, and it's literally up within another 10 seconds. And you're literally channeling somebody with another 56,000 alt. 
Things like bow stun, bow, bow stun, or the bow ultimate, for example, is another one that I strongly agree with being nerfed literally into oblivion. If you take a look at, for example, um, I decided to make a bow bow build because everybody and their mother was like, bow bow isn't even viable. I didn't want to make a snipe build because snipe overperforms to no end. Taking a look at something like this ability right here, I've been hit by it multiple times on stream and I get like this 15,000 death recap, 17,000, 20k death recap. And of course the ability just overperforms and it, typically it's the ballista morph. I have no idea why in terms of counter ability that the ballista morph, which is the morph that you just throw and it just sits there and just pelts you with ridiculous amounts of damage, it cannot be mitigated via dodge roll and it cannot be cloaked. God help you if you try to shield stack through it and heal through it. There is no healing through it. But the morph that is channeled has a ridiculous tooltip to it. Alright? I'm literally over the course of 3.1 seconds. Right? It says it does the damage over 4.1k seconds. I'm literally hitting someone with 80,000 damage. It's fully buffed, right? Fully buffed. This is a 100% uptime on the current build. Right? I'm literally hitting someone with 80,000 damage over 4 seconds. And on top of that, in case that doesn't kill you, you get to enjoy an additional 47,000 damage over time over the next 8 seconds. Mind you, it's like, whoever thought that this ability would be in any way, shape, or form balanced in PvP, it's like, you have to be kidding me. To sit here and be like, well, you know, just gain some line of sight. But what if there is no line of sight to gain? What if you're in the middle of a group fight, somebody randomly CCs you, maybe a DK fossilizes you, and literally 4.1 seconds goes by like that. Because by the time you CC break, again, you can't roll dodge it. Because even if you CC break and roll dodge, you're literally going to eat like 75% of the damage. Never mind the fact that you still get to eat the 47,000 damage over time effect, even if you break line of sight. Like people complained about resto about um you know about soul assault. This is an equal and even though it's more expensive, again, this is this, the cost here is reflective of having Keen up, so that's not the actual cost. The real cost is 160. Actually, is it 161? I don't remember it being that. I don't remember it being that expensive. I think it's a lot cheaper than that. I don't remember it being 160. I think it's cheaper. In any event. If you were to look at this from just a point for point, how much damage, and I talked about this before when I compared the Templar Adric Spear Ultimate, uh, and I compared that to something like, for example, um, DK Leap, right? Because they're both burst, uh, they're both burst abilities. If you were to compare just the upfront 79k damage, right? You're doing 79,000 damage. Now, per ultimate point, is even if it's 161, you're doing 490 ultimate for 490 damage per ultimate, and that's not including the additional 8%, the additional um, damage you do over time. So for the entire ultimate, it's 79k plus an additional 47k, right? That gives you 126,000 damage for the low cost of 161 ultimate. And you're literally doing 782 damage per alt point. You compare that to like a Magicka DK. You know, I mean, think about it. You, you compare that to, right, on this build where I'm running almost 6k, you know, almost 5,900 weapon damage. And you compare that to this ability, right? You compare that to DB, which everybody complains about DB. All right, it's let's just say thirteen and fifth, right? Thirteen, it's twenty-seven thousand, right? You're doing twenty-seven thousand damage for the low cost of one hundred and twenty-five alt, and you're doing two hundred and sixteen damage per alt point. And people were like, "Nerf Dawnbreaker," and I'm like, "Bro, really, really, Nerf Dawnbreaker? Put cast times on on DB? It's 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 utterly." ridiculous but anyway getting back to what i was saying what makes it really hard to be able to balance classes like a magical sorcerer is because of the vast amounts 
of things that people run. In my opinion, the easiest way to balance for the sake of PvP is to literally remove all proc sets, whether they're damage proc sets, heal proc sets, or they're mitigation proc sets, remove them all. Whether it's whether and or only allow people to utilize um, the one pieces, right? You can only wear a one piece from from a monster helm, and that would fix a lot of the problem. You'd remove things like Colorians, which is like has like ridiculous tooltip. You'd remove things like Scoria that has ridiculous tooltips. You'd remove things like Celine's that also has a ridiculous tooltip of 15k. Um, on a four second rotation it's like really uh, I mean there's so many there's so many sets in the game that just carry people again like choke thorns is another one 18,000 over four seconds on a four second window there are literally proc sets in the game that can proc I mean th thankfully they, they removed it where sets could proc off of proc another one is like earth core I don't even think I have earth core oh I do I have one piece of earth core I've never formed this thing. 20, 29,000 healing over 6 seconds. But of course it does it in an AoE. So when you heal yourself or an ally that is under 50%, you conjure a pool of quenching bullet, immediately removing all previously uh, previous enemy placed effects and healing the lowest health friendly target in the air. And of course it heals the lowest one so it can jump from person to person. Right? It'll always heal the lowest one. And this is on a 35 second rotation right so you put in earth core right you put in someone with earth core you put in someone with major protection from like for example steadfast hero right you run something like steadfast hero wherever the hell it is right where every time you cleanse you have 50 percent uptime on major protection perfectly utilizable by a templar or a warden you toss on earth core and then you toss on resto alt along with whatever other set that you want to run and it's really easy for all these people to just perpetually stay alive no but no one dies and this is what people complain about in group pvp that literally no one dies everybody complains about this tank meta and they blame it all on things like heavy armor and heavy armor does absolutely nothing for you in terms of mitigation like literally the difference between a 5-2 heavy and a 5-2 medium build is like four percent mitigation it's not that much mitigation it's primarily things that are carrying people like for example major protection minor protection people just slot the uh the ability from i don't even think i have it on this guy from uh, the sigic order ability and they've got it on their back bar they run um you know the two piece from what is it not maelstrom uh black rose i think it's the two the two two daggers or whatever the two um running dual wield on the back bar and then they have major protections so you got major protection on the back bar uh minor protection on the front bar between that and then op heals you throw on pirate skeleton or you throw on something like um like blood spawn and it becomes really difficult to balance when you have too many things that are just carrying people and so it's what i say it all the time when i'm in, when i'm pvp i use like this is a perfect example. 30% major vitality. You're running a Black Rose Resto on top of what? What did I say it was? 55, 55k? Times 0.3. Someone running an additional 16k plus, an, plus the 55k. Right? So it's 71,000 for anybody running a Black Rose Resto alt. Like, how, how do you kill people through that? How do you balance Black Rose Resto? How do you... Is it Resto alt? Is it the Black Rose Restoration Staff? Is it the is it the Earth Gore or the guy that's wearing Pirate Skeleton who's also got Steadfast Hero on the back bar? He'll just pop a cleanse, have thirty percent reduction, pop you know the shield from the Resto skill line with Black Rose Resto Alt, toss up the Resto toss up the Resto Alt. It's like there's there's entirely too many things in the game where, in my opinion, the easiest way. To mitigate all of that so you're so you're, you're not literally wasting development dollars because that's really what it boils down to is that you're wasting development dollars when you can just you know what we're just going to remove all proc sets from pvp and the only sets that you can actually use are sets that just give you straight that give you straight mitigation either you pick a set that gives you 
you know, with the two piece where it gives you the physical resist, and then the last part gives you some sort of uh, bonus to resistance. And we're going to remove all these percent increases to the game, along with all forms of procs, whether that be blood spawn, whether it be earth gore, whether it's shit like zons, whether you are a person who are zons, calorians, all the proc sets, and then balance the game. Because you can't balance classes. You can't say this class and this particular ability is overperforming in the light of all these carries. You'll never be able to balance the game. And all you're doing is you're just wasting development dollars. And this is why people just end up leaving the game. Because they realize from a player base that there's so many things that are broken in PvP. And a lot of this shit doesn't affect PvE. And of course, if you were to do that, for example, then you no longer have to worry about people in your PvE community getting upset because you're nerfing all these things for PvP. You can literally just remove them from PvP, and then you can go about balancing the classes. Besides the fact that it's much easier to balance PvP than it is... It's much, it's much I should say, it's much easier to balance PvE when you've balanced PvP in the game. And this is just my opinion. I've been playing ESO for the past five years. It's been pretty much dying in terms of PvP. Like literally the last of the little bit of a community that the game has is all but coming to an end. And of course, if the next patch goes live the way it currently is, you'll see a lot of players that are just going to up and leave the game because there's so many bad changes. So many bad changes for next patch. I can't underscore the fact like just having discussions with people like not I don't even post in the forum because I can't but just in talking with people in stream talking with people on YouTube like really people just don't understand how bad the changes are going to be for PvP and none of this stuff affects PvE it primarily affects people who enjoy PvP and it's really sad because there's really so much potential in the game but it's so but the potential just gets wasted patch after patch after patch by developers who just do not understand PvP.